So we're talking about M43 today, and luckily it is actually in this poster that I have up outside my office door. Some of you might recognize this constellation, it's very recognizable, it's Orion. And this image is actually one that I made for BBC Stargazing Live a couple of years ago. And basically we asked people to go outside and take an image of Orion like with whatever camera kit they had, so be it an SLR or an iPhone and send them in to us and then I sort of stacked them all together and it was like every photon counts and we made this beautiful image and it's really cool because you can tell that people have really focused on the belt stars and so they're really really sharp whereas the other stars say Betelgeuse in the top left is like really fuzzy because not as many people got it in the image and so we don't have as much data about that and so you have this kind of like tunnel vision towards uh, the belt stars. And you'll notice from the belt, Orion's belt, uh, also hangs uh, the hunter's sword. And if we follow that down, we find today's Messier object. Do you like my nails this week as well, by the way? They're the solar system. I got so excited <laughs> when I realized I had enough colors to do that. <laughs> so we got the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, complete with red spot, <laughs> Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and then Voyager, because I wanted to use the silver. <laughs> Pluto isn't silver, <laughs> so I'm very pleased with them. So uh, this is that region of Orion that I just pointed at. And some of you might recognize it. Some of you might be thinking, well, that's the Orion Nebula. They've already done that Messier object, Becky. What are you doing? <laughs> but actually, M43 is also in this image as well. So this is M42, the Orion Nebula. That Megan did a video on a couple of years ago. And this guy here, this one little star with this dust lane, that's M43. So it's kind of like the baby sibling of M42. Tiny little thing. But it's a really, really interesting object in itself, actually. So despite the fact that M42 gets all the attention, it turns out M43 might be sort of just as important for actually M42 existing in the first place. So here it is, zoomed in in all its glory. And you can see it's a lot more spectacular when you zoom in. That dust lane is really prominent and really strong, but you'll notice that mostly it's just one star. M43 is a star forming region. It's one of these sort of star forming nebula, very similar to M42 in that respect. And you see this one star is really what's creating this sort of like cavity around M43. And actually, if you look in the infrared, which makes it look even cooler, so that previous image was actually just sort of like this half over here. But you can see that one star has just blown out this huge cavity. And the reason we can see that in the infrared is because in the infrared, you can see through the dust that's getting in the way. And there's a lot of dust in all of these like sort of star forming nebula. So this one star is what we call a B star. It's sort of the second highest class of stars you can get. Not quite the hottest, but almost the hottest. And basically after it was formed, it's thrown out huge amounts of radiation in, in this like stellar wind. And that's what's blown out this really cool looking cavity uh, in M43. And you can really see that dust lanes disappeared. And what you're seeing here is the gas that's now being illuminated by that star in the very center. So clearly M43 is in Messier's list of objects, uh, despite being just one star in the <laughs> like tiny, tiny nebula in comparison to the Orion Nebula, which obviously gets all the attention. But I found a paper. It's still in review. So it's only been posted to what we call the Astronomy Archive. It's not been peer reviewed and properly published yet. But what its conclusions are, I think are really, really cool. And it's all about M42 and M43. A new look at the molecular gas in M42 and M43. But basically what they've done is they have looked at some of the gas emission uh, in these nebula in both M42 and M43. And they've been looking at carbon monoxide emission. So obviously uh, atoms absorb light and then they give out light in a very specific wavelength and you get this sort of peak, a very specific wavelength. And that's what they've been looking at. And they've been looking to see if it's blue shifted or red shifted. Blue shifted as in like a Doppler shift so the blue shifted light is moving towards us and the red shifted light is moving away from us. And they're trying to figure out what kind of movement is going on in this big complex star forming system of, of you know, this huge amount of gas and dust because these things are sort of you know, light years across. So this is figure 15 and what figure 15 is showing on the left hand side here is the blue shifted contours overlaid on that beautiful image of M42 and M43 and then the red shifted contours on the right hand side. And so what they've said is that if you look at this and where the blue shifting components are and where the red shifted components are, you can then model in, on a computer what is actually going on in, in three dimensions with all these cloud systems. And when you do that, you actually find that M43 has been colliding with M42. 
And so these huge clouds of gas are sort of like coming together and this is at great speeds. So these kind of things travel, at, you know, sort of beyond the speed of sound. And when you do that, you get shock waves and shock waves are the things that cause gas to get really dense, clump together, and that's how you end up forming stars. And so what they're claiming in this paper is that M42 and the stars that have created that big beautiful cavity and the glow of the dust and the gas in M42 wouldn't exist if not for M43, the piddly little guy. And so basically those shocks in that collision have triggered the formation of the hottest stars in M42, the O stars. So the ones in this first image where we said this was M43, this is M42 here, and you'll see this huge clump of stars here. And these are the hottest stars. These are what we call O stars, and they're incredibly hot. They're so much more massive than our sun. And the radiation from those is what's caused this beautiful cavity in M42. Now, those of you that will remember Megan's video on M42 from a couple of years ago will remember that she said that it is literally just down to one of the O stars in M42, one of the hottest stars that's giving off so much radiation that's created such a grand structure in M42. And that O star has been triggered its formation by the collision with M43. I guess M43 shouldn't be the overlooked sort of psychic of M42 anymore. It should, they should be taken together <laughs> because they wouldn't exist without each other. Literally, you could not have said anything that made me happier than the Ring Bearer Galaxy. That's a cool name. That is a really cool name. That's better than Unknown, even. Yeah. Okay, the Ring Bearer, Mr. Frodo.